There are three key features of demand-based forms that are important to understand. They are the API priority map, the autocomplete dropdown, and finally, the hidden form fields feature. For every demand-based forms implementation, if you do not specify a particular API priority map, then the API priority is to, by default set to domain, then IP address, then autocomplete. What this means is that demand base will always gather data from our three different API sources, those being the domain API, the IP address API, and the company name autocomplete API. By default, the domain takes precedence over the IP address and company name autocomplete dropdown. To demonstrate, I'll spoof my IP as Nike and then add demand base. When I add demand base, you'll see that Nike all of a sudden populates in many of the form fields. However, if I were to add a work email address that is not associated with Nike, then we should see the data change to the company that's associated with my email address. For instance, if I were to type test at google.com into the work email address field, and then I tab over to the next field, you'll notice that the data inside of the form fields is now changed to information about Google. For instance, let's say I typed in the University of Oregon into the autocomplete dropdown and then selected the proper record. You'll notice that the information inside of the form fields has not changed because the domain API takes precedence over both the IP address API call and the company name autocomplete API call. Now let's say we were to change this API priority map. Let's say I were to move the IP address API call above the domain IP API call, and subsequently I were to also take the autocomplete API call and prioritize it over both the IP address API call and the domain API call. In this case, if I spoof my IP as Nike and then add demand base, we'll of course see Nike being returned into the form fields. However, this time, if I were to type in test at google.com into the work email address field and tab over, you'll notice that the data inside of the form fields has not changed. This is because we prioritized the IP API information over the email domain information. Subsequently, if I are now to change the information inside the company name autocomplete to a different company, for instance, the University of Oregon. Now we'll see that the information inside the form fields has changed. We see education now as the industry, for instance. It's important to know the API priority mapping for your demand-based form so that we can deliver the proper behavior to your form pages and ensure that the proper data is being returned into your leads. The next important feature of demand-based forms is the company autocomplete dropdown. Let's repeat the steps from before, but this time focus specifically on the autocomplete dropdown. First, we'll take the autocomplete API call and prioritize it over the other API calls. Next, we'll make sure to spoof our IP address as Nike and then add demand base like before. It's important to note what happens when I decide to change the company inside the company name field. For instance, if I were to type a random company like Apple, it's important to note first that the first return inside the dropdown is actually the return value given by the IP address API call. Secondly, it's important to note that the rest of the results inside the dropdown are actually dependent on the geolocation from the IP address API call. For instance, the original Nike IP address was located in Beaverton, Oregon. As a result, we'll see that most of the results in the company autocomplete dropdown are also located in regions near Beaverton, Oregon and we'll specifically see companies near the Beaverton, Oregon range that match 
the string that I typed into the company name field. This feature is designed to make it easier for users to complete the form. However, it's important to note that the geolocation that's used for the company name autocomplete dropdown is not the geolocation that demandbase returns, but rather the geolocation data that's returned from the public IP registry. It's important to make this distinction because in the situation that the user filling out the form is not coming in from a recognized corporate IP address, then it makes sense to use the information from the public IP registry rather than the demand-based database. The third feature of demand-based forms that's important to discuss are the hidden fields. On this form, we see about 10 different form fields. However, what's not apparent is that if we inspect the page, we actually have many more form fields. If I click into my HTML and check these form fields, you'll notice that they hold information like revenue range. When I actually dig into the input field for these hidden fields, you'll notice that the value for some of these fields is actually populated. For instance, we see that spoofing our IP address as Nike in Oregon causes the revenue range hidden field to populate with over $5 billion. And if we type demandbase.connectors.webform.companyprofile into the console of Google Chrome's developer tools, we'll see that this value of over 5 billion is the exact same value that's returned for the revenue range inside the API response. When you decide to configure demand-based forms, it's important to understand which fields you want visible to the user and which fields you want remain hidden. Sometimes you'll want some fields to remain hidden so the user does not see the information inside the form fields changing live while they're interacting with the form. Other times you want to keep fields hidden so that the user isn't aware that the man-based data is being populated into the form at all. We generally recommend our clients to keep the visible fields at a minimum. It's important to have the email address field and the company name field, for instance, on all of your forms. This ensures that the demand-based forms code will actually attach to your form on the page. However, you don't necessarily need to have any of the other fields like phone number, state, or country visible on the form itself. It may make more sense to actually keep those fields hidden. Obviously, making the decision about what fields you want to keep visible and keep hidden are completely up to you and dependent entirely on the desired behavior of your form pages. It's up to you to discuss your desires with your demand-based representative and make sure that your demand-based engineer implements the code necessary to achieve your desired behavior.